In this video, you're going to learn how to create a test in your Blackboard course. <clears throat> Before we do that, I just want to make mention to you that tests and surveys are almost exactly the same. They're built the same way with the same types of questions. The only major difference between the two is that tests are graded. The questions have point values and the test is directly linked to the grade center. So when the student submits their final test, the questions are automatically graded and it will and the score will be populated in the grade center. Whereas in a survey, the questions are not graded and there is no link to the grade center at all. So other than that, they work the exact same way. There are a couple of ways that you can create a new test. And when you create a new test, essentially all you're doing is creating the empty container of the test. After you create it, that's when you will build the questions in it. So to start, there are a couple of ways. You can click right on any content area of your course. In this example, I'm clicking on the Assessments link on the course menu. Point to Create Assessment, and then click on Test. And when the Create Test window opens up, you can see that I already have one test previously created called Famous People. If I want to create a new one, I just click the Create button and it asks me to give a name to my test. And essentially that's all you're doing in this step is naming your test and creating the empty shell of the test. Before I do that, I want to show you the, the other approach to creating a new test and it's it brings you to exactly the same page but to access it you go to the control panel click on course tools and then click on test surveys and pools and when this screen opens up you click on tests and essentially it brings you to the very same creation uh, screen you're going to build a new test here and you're going to give it a name I'm going to call this rock and roll music you can give a description for this test if you want, it's not mandatory. And you can give the students specific instructions about how they're to build the test. For example, you have one hour to complete this test. Okay. And then you submit. And that in that click, you have just created the empty test, to which you can now add your questions. You can reuse questions that you've previously created that are sitting in a question pool, or you can upload questions from your computer that you have previously created in some other application like Exam View, for example. And we'll be talking about how to import questions from Exam View in a future video. Before we get into that, uh, creating the questions of the test, I want to bring your attention to this button over here on the right. These are the default question settings for which you can set right now before you start to build your questions. And I'll just walk down through this screen with you. The first one is you can select this checkbox if you want to provide feedback for individual answers. Otherwise, if you leave that unchecked, there will be a space in, in the creation of the test for you to provide feedback for the correct answer or the incorrect answer. That's the default setting. But if you did want to provide feedback on individual <laughs> answers, you could do it simply by checking that box. And then when you go to build your test questions, you will see that there is an option in there for providing feedback for individual answers. I'm going to leave that unchecked for now. You can check these boxes if you want to be able to add images and external links to your questions. That's a, often a quite a popular one, especially in very visual type tests where you're asking students to identify the different uh, areas of an image or something like that. You can also check this one if you want to add images and external links to the answers that uh, you're providing in your test. This one uh, by default is usually checked on, but it allows you to add categories, topic levels, levels of difficulty, and keywords to each test question that you create. And that's called the question made metadata. Later on, once you've got a, a large pool of questions created, you may want to search for all the questions in your question pool that deal with the an human anatomy, for example. Well, if you've created this metadata, as you go, as you build each question, 
by putting in keywords like human anatomy, you'll be able to search your question pool for all of those questions that have that certain keyword in it, or a level of difficulty, for example, or a topic, or whatever. So that's a good one to have checked on. It gives you that option to do that when you're building. Scoring, uh, this box here uh, gives you the opportunity to, uh, to specify default points when creating the questions. And de by default, it usually sits on 10. A lot of the questions that we create in Blackboard are relatively simple questions like true and false where there's only one answer. So you may want to upfront change that default value to something other than 10. You can do it right now. If you don't do that, you still have the option after your test is created of going back in and editing the question point values for any questions that you create later on. So you, you don't have to do it now, but it just saves you a lot of time uh, after your test is created if you set that question default value at this point. You can check this box here if you want to specify partial credit for answers. For example, if you have a, a multiple answer question where the student is asked to select all the answers that are applicable to the question, if they get two out of four right, as long as that box is checked, they can you can give them partial credit for the answers that they get correct. And you can check this one if you want to provide the option to assign questions for extra credit in the test. Also down here under display, if you check this box, the ra the the random ordering of the answers will be an, in a random format so that uh, the answers don't all come out in a static format. Check this one to specify the horizontal or vertical display of the answers. It just gives you the option. As long If it's unchecked, you won't have the option of specifying if you want your answers to be vertical or horizontal. So it's a good idea to have that one checked. And this just simply gives you the option to uh, number your questions like 1, 2, 3, or A, B, C. So once you've got all of those question settings uh, set to the way that you want it, you click Submit. And that's all there is to creating a blank test. In the next video, we're going to talk about creating questions in that test. So that's the end of this tutorial. Thank you.